What is going on, my fellow PGA DFS grinders, Brian Berryman, back with you again from Fantasy Labs this week to break down the Fortinet Championship. I hope you guys all enjoyed your golf off season. Um, the couple week break was nice, but I am excited to jump right back in to the Fantasy Labs models to show you guys how I will be attacking this week's slate. Um, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, the course this week is Silverado Resort and Spa, located in Napa, California. Um, it's a pretty standard course setup for the most part. Par 72, coming in right under 7,200 yards this week. The front nine is going to feature a mixture of dog legs, both left and right, which is going to force golfers to shape the ball off the tee. Uh, the back nine is pretty straightforward, mostly straight holes for the most part, um, but definitely going to be interesting off the tee on the front nine to see how these golfers choose to attack some of these dog legs. And we are on Poa Anna Greens, which is typical for this part of the country. Um, winning scores here over the years, I'm going to go through from last year all the way back to 2017 just to give you guys a feel for uh, the ballpark we can expect for scoring, as well as the types of players that tend to do well in this event. Um, Max Homa last year won at uh, 19 under par. 2021, Stuart Sink won at minus 21. 2020, Cameron Champ at minus 17. 2019, Kevin Tway at minus 14. And then Brendan Steele, back-to-back -back winners in 2018 and 2017 at 15 under par and 18 under par. Um, off the tee, golfers are going to see tree-lined fairways. That is the biggest defense, I would say, of the course. Watching the course flyover, I kind of got a little claustrophobic, to be honest with you. It was interesting to see, um, at least on the 3D model of the course, how many trees there are in play. Um, will be interesting to see, again, how the golfers choose to attack the contour of these fairways as they are uh, very much bordered by a, a lot of trees. Um, the fairways on this course are tough to hit. Um, on average, 52.2% compared to a normal course, which is right around 62%. So um, the, the fairways themselves are pretty narrow. In combination with the tree line fairways and the multiple dog legs, it's just a little bit of a tougher task off the tee to hit the fairway. But it's not going to be too penal if you are missing the fairway. Um, so follow me here. Obviously, we want our golfers in the fairway. You can control the spin. You can control the launch a little bit better, and your lies are more predictable. Um, however, in the rough at this course, while it's not penal, it's still going to be a, a significant dif dif disadvantage, obviously, because they're not going to be able to have the same amount of control over the golf ball from the thicker grass. Um, that stuff is pretty basic, but at the same time, it's going to be imperative that our golfers are in the fairway Given the scores I just read off to you, to win this tournament, we're going to be approaching the, the 18 to 20 under par range. So we need golfers that are in the fairway consistently. Um, there is only water in play on two holes. So at the end of the day, this isn't a difficult golf course, but it is still going to require some tactical work both off the tee and into greens in order to compete and get your golfers towards the top of the leaderboard. Um, on the pro shots, pretty straightforward. There's a lot of bunkers that surround these greens, but mostly in the front portion of the greens, some elevated uh, greens as well. Uh, but honestly, the course is pretty straightforward for the most part. So I want to bring up the strokes gained grid that I put together every week. Basically, this is a correlation chart that is showing how each statistic uh, off the tee approach around the green and putting, how correlated that is to strokes gained total numbers over the course of this entire course, over the history of this entire course, right? So I plot all the strokes gained total numbers against their individual and respective um, strokes gained categories. This gives me a good picture as to the kind of golfer that we should be looking at. Um, unfortunately, this week, this is a pretty unremarkable graph, guys. Everything that you're seeing in this red box here is within one or two points of the PGA average. So there's not going to be a specific player profile that I'll be targeting this week. What this points to for me is more all around type players. 
and that is backed up in the data and what you've seen kind of throughout the course of of um, the history of this course is many different styles of play can get the job done here and i'll go into that a little bit more in detail later on but wanted to give you guys um, a feel for why i am coming up with that conclusion and this is a big part of it moving on to how i will be uh, adjusting the model for this week if you are unfamiliar with these videos essentially what i do every week is put together within the fantasy labs models tool a custom model that you can copy yourself and adjust how you see fit uh, weighting certain ca stat categories that i find uh, to be predictive this week that will give me a model rating here in this column here so what i did for the model is reflective of the graph that i just showed you really focusing on all around style of play approach play off the tee play tee to green play and of course birdie or better percentage because we are going to need golfers that can score the ball given the winning score projection should be in the area of 18 to 21 under par okay let's move on to the golfers that i will be targeting this week the first guy that is really popping up in the model, he leads the entire field in my model by a solid five points here is Corey Connors. He is an elite ball striker, tee to green, which we know he is extremely consistent as well. He's made five straight cuts to end last season, highlighted by a fifth place finish at the BMW Championship. In those five straight cuts, he had no finish worse than 28th place. This is pretty typical for what we've seen of Corey Connors over the years. He is a very consistent player, but his short game and putting has really been the Achilles heel that has hampered him to getting over the top and getting more wins. Um, that definitely could come into play this week as we are on the Poa Anna Greens and Connors really does struggle on poa anna greens it's his worst surface over all the all the um, different surfaces that are tracked however for a course fit he hits a ton of fairways he is at 67 percent from last season and he's very elite into greens one of the best approach players on tour so he's going to be giving himself plenty of opportunities putting is a very volatile statistic um, while there are patterns that emerge with players like connor's um, I still believe that putting is just one of those statistics that you shouldn't wait too heavily on any given week just because it is very random when it comes to um, regression analysis and seeing how these golfers perform over long periods of time. There are ups and downs for every single golfer um, as opposed to approach play, which is a lot more reliable and more dependable. So Corey Connors leading the model at 10,300. Keep an eye on the ownership if he does creep up. I'm recording this on Tuesday, so this number likely will change. We'll see. But right now, I have him at 16% projected ownership. If you see this number Wednesday night approaching 20%, 22%, which I don't foresee happening, but if it does, it may warrant a fade just because we know Connors does struggle on the greens. He lost eight strokes putting at the Tour Championship, which likely cost him millions of dollars. Um, it's just something to keep an eye on. At 16% ownership, I'll be in, but definitely keep an eye on the ownership as we get closer to Wednesday night. All right, second guy in the model that is really showing up well, Hideki Matsuyama here at 10,700. I appear to be a little bit higher on Hideki than others that I have seen uh, so far this week, uh, just around the industry reading some stuff. Um, it, it tends to be pretty polarized on Hideki. I, I understand the injury concerns that we've seen over the last month or two with the neck injury. Um, but at the same time, when I think of elite players tee to green, especially in a field that's a little bit weaker like this one, Hideki really stands out to me as a great play at the top end of the price range here at 10,700. He is my highest projected golfer. And here's why. Um, he played pretty well in the tour championship he finished 11th place but he gained 3.6 strokes on approach which is a great great sign for hideki when those irons start to get hot the man gives himself plenty of opportunities for birdies which we will need this week as discussed earlier um, the other reason i'm really liking hideki is he is a positive putter on poa anna greens which 
is a great sign and a great thing um, when we're talking about Hideki because that is typically his weak point. He loses strokes on all other putting surfaces outside of Poa Anna. So when we get him on a course that he can take advantage of the Poa Anna greens and potentially get hot with the irons, um, the upside is unlimited. And again, to me, he's the best player in this field from a talent standpoint. So at 10,700, I am definitely liking where he sits. Um, he has had some good success at this course as well in the past with finishes of third place, 17th place, and sixth place. Uh, he did have one miscut, um, but in general, that is a solid trend and definitely um, is checking a lot of the boxes for me. So I am in on, on Hideki. Keep an eye on the ownership again. I don't, I'm pretty confident in this number. I like where it's at at 15%. If it does tend to start trickling up towards that 20, 22% range, um, you know, you make the call on that. I'm firmly in on him this week and think he is in a great spot uh, to bounce back after what kind of was a little rough season last year. Okay. Uh, the third player that I am liking this week, that the model is liking as well, Emiliano Grillo down here at 9,200. He is second in strokes gain off the tee and fourth in birdie or better percentage over the last 24 rounds. Uh, two things that I'm definitely looking for, as I talked about earlier on in the video, want guys that are going to be in play off the tee. He is a accurate driver, 65% of his fairways last year. He's in good form coming to a course where he has won before. He did win here in uh, 2015. So Definitely liking the play a little higher price than I would typically buy in on with Grillo, uh, but everything seems to be aligning. He's in good form. He won here in the past, and it just feels like this is a good spot for him. So 9,200 showing up pretty well in the model. I will be going to Emiliano Grillo this week. On to the fades for this week. Uh, two high price guys that I just do not foresee me playing and I have good reason for both of them. The first one that I am definitely fading will be Sahith Tagala here at 10,000. Um, honestly, I just don't really know how I can categorize Sahith Tagala. Like to me, this guy is, it's just hard to pinpoint. He's kind of all over the place. From what I've seen, um, you know, he's not the longest hitter. He's not the most accurate driver either. Um, he's not an elite approach player, but somehow he gets it done every week. He had a great rookie season. I'm not bashing him by any means. I think he's going to be a great player on tour. Uh, but I just don't know if he is quite there yet, especially at this 10000 price tag. Um, I just am liking guys... I just prefer the guys that I know have been there before, ha are more consistent, are more elite players at this point in their careers for just a little bit more. For 300 more, you can get Connors. For 700 more, you can get Hideki. For 500 more, you can get Max Homa. Um, I just think that that's an easy decision. Um, and a, a few more stats here that, that I'm going to throw out to kind of back up my claim. Again, you make the call on this. This is just kind of how I'm seeing things. Um, he finished 28th at the Tour Championship where he lost strokes in every statistical category, including seven strokes tee to green. So obviously tee to green is a culmination of around the green, off the tee and approach. Uh, he did lose strokes in all those categories. That's never a good sign for a player. Obviously, again, one event, don't want to overreact to it. Um, but this has kind of became become a theme. Um, he has random spike weeks, but then he'll follow it up with a dud performance. He only has two top 10 finishes in his last 16 events. At this price point at 10K, you're likely going to need a top five, top six, maybe top seven finish, depending on how many birdies he racks up. And I just don't know if that's going to happen enough times to warrant the price tag in what I'm projecting at 12% ownership right now on Tuesday. So for me, this is going to be an easy fade on Sahit the Gala. I just prefer prefer the consistency of the more elite players that are priced just ahead of him. But you can make the call um, when it comes time to building your lineups. I will be out on Sahit the Gala. Last guy I will be fading, Maverick McNeely. I think this price is totally outrageous, if I'm being honest with you. Um, he ranks 121st in this field in the strokes gain approach over the last 24 rounds. It's hard for me to buy in on a guy that has been that terrible with the irons on a course 
that we're going to need to be close to 20 under par. We need elite ball striking. We need elite scoring ability. Um, he's a good putter. He's able to put the ball in the hole, uh, but it's not going to be at a rate that I'm comfortable rostering at 9,900 and double-digit ownership, what is likely to be double-digit ownership. Um, he's lost strokes tee to green over the last three events coming into this one. He did finish second place last year uh, in this event, so I guess we have that to hang our hat on. He's from he, he plays college golf at Stanford, so he prefers the Poana greens. He's a great Poana green putter. So I mean, I guess there are some things that I could say. Um, sure, go ahead and roster him. But for me, I just need more consistent ball striking, especially at a nine thousand nine hundred price tag. And it doesn't really look like he's going to be going overlooked um maybe if he got down into the single digits low single digits four five six percent maybe but that rarely happens at a nine thousand nine hundred price tag especially in a weaker field like this one so for me i just again i would rather just spend the extra 400 for connors would rather spend the extra 600 for homa um these are just easier decisions for me but there is something to be said if you're looking to get different and or looking to get contrarian and his uh, projected ownership drops Wednesday night. Um, you know, I won't argue with it, but it's not something that I will be doing because I just think that there's better plays at the top of the price range at the top of the board here uh, for this week. OK, on to my low owned gems, the GPP only plays. These are the types of plays that will win you all the cheddar come Sunday evening. Um, we need guys that are going overlooked by the field for one reason or another uh, to, to be coming in on our rosters to make sure that we're lowering our cumulative ownership on our rosters so that we're avoiding duplication. And uh, for game theory purposes, we just need low owned guys. So um, I could go more into detail on that. If you'd like in a future video, we can talk more strategy. If you'd like, leave a comment. Maybe I can you know make a video about golf strategy if that's something we're looking for but in terms of the guys that i think are going overlooked that can definitely have spiked weeks this week the first one i'm looking at is ches Reeve down here at 7600 right now i haven't projected at four percent ownership uh, i think this is a great play he has made the cut in all eight starts at this event that he's played in. The course fits him great. It's not a super long track, so his lack of length isn't going to hurt him as much. He's a very accurate driver of the golf ball off of the tee. And he ranks second in the field in strokes gained approach over the last 24 rounds. So we're getting a guy who has been hot fire with the irons over the better part of the last two months at 7,600 in a weak field at sub 5% ownership. Uh, keep an eye on the ownership, same deal. If it goes up, definitely can see fading him. But right now, I just think this is an excellent spot for Ches He He tends to lack upside uh, in general. Ches Reeve just does, like I said, isn't the longest hitter, isn't the most consistent guy, doesn't have a great short game. So uh, a lot of the field, a lot of our opponents when they're building this week are gonna see Ches Reeve at 7,600 Look at his recent finishes where he hasn't cracked the top 30 in the last four or five four or five starts, and they're going to pass on him. But there's more to the story that we need to kind of read between the lines here and say it's very possible that Ches Reeve has a spiked week this week because it's well within the range of outcomes that he is able to put together four good rounds when he's putting the ball in the fairway and he's and he's top five over the last 24 rounds in strokes gain approach. So all he needs is a hot putter to, to, to get going. And at 7,600, we probably just need a top 12 performance out of him, um, which is very possible. I mean, he finished, let's see here, he finished third here in 2020. So uh, it's definitely possible. He's shown it in the past. So I will be going to Ches Reeve as a leverage spot this week. And I think it makes a ton of sense um, to you know round out some of the rosters in that mid-7K price range. The last guy I want to talk about, this is a little bit of a controversial one, um, but I am betting on talent winning out. Webb Simpson, 8,400. And guys, I get it. <clears throat> He's coming off the worst season of his career. He was, I mean, there's no other way to say it. He was horrible. He you know, didn't have very many good finishes. He missed a lot of cuts. Just, just a lot of stuff that you don't see typically out of Webb Simpson. But he has two ways to go. He can either hang it up, call it a career, and just move on. I just don't see that happening. Webb is an elite talent. And when I was looking through 
the strokes gained statistics over the last, I would call it six to eight events. Yes, the finishes weren't there. Yes, the data wasn't pointing to uh, elite ball striking by any means, but it also wasn't pointing to a guy who was totally lost. He missed the cut on the number in back-to-back weeks. He was losing strokes on approach, but barely in the red, you know, half a stroke, 1.2, 1.4, nothing that's going to stand out as a guy who is completely lost. So I think this is one of those plays that people can look back on on Sunday night or Monday morning when they're looking back through the rosters and be like, man, how did I miss Webb Simpson at 8,400? Um, yes, he's, she struggled, and I understand all the concerns with that, but he hasn't played in a month, right? So I just am going to bet on Webb Simpson finding his talent over the last month, you know, grinding on the range, whatever he was, whatever he had to do to get ready uh, for the start of the new season here. I'm just going to bet on that and be early before our competition catches up, right? So if we can get Webb Simpson 8,400 in a weaker field at single digit ownership, that's just a spot that I'm going to take. And, um, you know, I, I don't blame you if you don't want to tail that because it is a, a riskier play. Um, but he definitely has the upside, and this course should fit him, should fit him well when he's when he's hitting it right. So um, that will do it for the model breakdown for this week, guys. Really appreciate you uh, taking a watch on this video. Super excited to be starting off the 2022 uh, 2023 PGA Tour season now with the start of the swing season. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and give me a follow on Twitter. My handle is at 13ERRYMAN. It is just Berryman, but instead of the B, a 13. Um, go ahead and like this video, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out via DM on Twitter or drop a comment on the video, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. Again, appreciate you watching, and I will be back next week um, to see you guys then. So take care, good luck this week, and we will see you next week. Have a good one.